needed in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Abba Father. We bless your holy name. To you alone, O oh God, be the praise and the glory and the dominion and the power. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Come on, somebody shout a big hallelujah. Somebody shout a big hallelujah. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. It's good to be here again. It's good to do what God has called us to do. Whether we do it in the building, in the four walls of the church or outside, wherever it is, as long as we are propag propagating the gospel, that is all that matters. So it's good that we have the opportunity to propagate this gospel. Father, we give you the praise for this opportunity, for this medium. I don't take it for granted. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And I know that God has a word for you this morning. Come on, somebody invite your friends, share the video, because God has a word for somebody this morning. Amen, amen, amen. Can you please open your Bibles with me? Let's just go straight down to business. The book of Genesis chapter 1 and verse 11 to 12. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 11 to 12. And I will read. <clears throat> then God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb that yields seed, and the fruit tree that yields fruit according to its kind, whose seed is in itself on the earth. And it was so. And the earth brought forth grass, the herb that yields seed according to its kind, and the tree that yields fruit, whose seed is in itself according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. Amen. Thank you for that, for the reading of your word. Thank you for your word. By the grace of God this morning, I'll be speaking on the topic, replicate. Replicate replicate amen amen when the lord gave me this word i was like okay holy spirit let's see where this leads us to so go with me on this journey and let's see where this word leads us to replicate means to make an act of copying or reproducing something replicate means to make an act of copying or reproduce something and that is what the lord expects of me and you when God made man, he said, be fruitful and multiply. What was he saying in essence? Replicate. He did not just create us or make anything and expected it to remain the same way he made it. When he made, I deliberately went, I deliberately chose, you know, this scripture. I didn't want to use um, verse 27 and 28 when he said, let us make man and give them the instruction to be fruitful and multiply. Because replication does not just stop at man god expects everything we do to replicate he expects everything he created to replicate he created the fishes in the sea he created the birds in the air he gave them instruction. in fact the trees and the grasses even the earth he gave an instruction he says bring forth your kind replicate copy me i am the god who replicates i am a fruitful god i am the god who multiplies and i need you to copy me because i am your role model I am what you've seen. I set myself as a role model to you. So I want you to copy me and replicate. Don't just stop at you. Don't just stop at what you've been given. Don't just stop at what you have. Replicate what is in your hand. Replicate what you've been given. Replicate your gifts. Replicate your talents. Replicate everything that you've been given. Amen. He wants us to replicate, to reproduce everything he has put in us. And this is what keeps the cycle of life going. This is what keeps the cycle of life going. The reproduction, the multiplication, the fruitfulness. That's what keeps life going. Where there is no reproduction or replication, death becomes inevitable. Where there is no reproduction, where there is no replication, where there is no fruitfulness, death becomes inevitable. Amen. A company that stops reproducing anything, a company that does not, that, 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 that um, closes reproduction, it folds up in no distant time. Because it is in the reproduction, in the reproducing of 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 of, of um of stuff, the things it, it it does. It is in the reproduction of services that keeps the company alive and going. Where replication is stopped, where replication does not take place anymore, where reproduction does not take place anymore, that is a final thing. And that is why a static water, a stagnant water, stings. It's not flowing. Where there is no flow, it stops. So for life to carry on. We must replicate what we've been given. Amen, somebody. For life to carry on, for the cycle of life to carry on, that which you've been given, you must reproduce it. You must replicate it. 
when God was to destroy the earth with flood in Genesis chapter 6 and verse 19 to 20, you can read it there later. Genesis chapter 6 and verse 19 to 20. You can just put it up there, please. He instructed Noah to take into the ark just two of each animal, the male and the female. That was the instruction he gave to Noah. He didn't tell Noah, bring in all the animals on the earth or in the land. He just said, take two of each animal, the male and the female. Why? Because he expected them to reproduce their kind again. He just took two. All you need to, all they needed to reproduce is already in them. The scripture we read says, the seed, it says, and the earth brought forth the grass, the herb that yields seed according to its kind, and the tree that yields fruit, whose seed is in itself. The seed to replicate, the seed to reproduce, the seed to be fruitful, it's in you already. It's in me already. So we don't need to go out to look for it. He said, just get two of each animal. Because the seed to reproduce is already in them. When God created us, he created us with a seed. And I've heard people say, I've heard men of God say, never eat your seed. Eat the fruit, but not your seed. Never eat your seed. Because it's your seed that you're able to replicate. So the seed to replicate was already in them. And that is why he instructed Noah. He said, just take two of each animal, the male and the female because they have what it takes to 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 replicate themselves into million and billion folds the seed is already in them amen amen so everything man needs to excel everything you and i need to excel in life in ministry in our career everything we need to make progress is already in us that seed is already in us he didn't just create the fruits and the trees he created the seed as well he put the seed inside because God is not going to keep creating and creating and creating. It was just one creation story that we have. Just one creation story. Because he has put in us everything else, everything we need to replicate that seed, that fruit rather. Amen. Now, the Bible says in the book of 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 3, According as his divine power had given unto us all things, not some, all things that pertain to life and godliness. So you have all you need. Not just all it takes, but all you need to succeed both in your physical and your spiritual life. We have all we need. Everything we need. Sometimes we still go out to find things we need. And we still, we still pray, oh Lord, please provide this. Please give me this. To succeed. We have all we need. Everything we need is within us already. All you need to do is to look inwards. To search deeply and perhaps ask the Lord to open your eyes to see all you need to succeed in life. When the woman who was the widow of the prophet, who, whose husband owed a debt, when the debtors came to take her son and she ran to um, Elisha, he said, what do you have in your hands? Everything we need to succeed in life, everything we need to go to our next level is already in our hands. What do you have? Perhaps you don't know that it is in your hands. Then you need to ask the Lord, open my eyes because it is in you. You are that seed yielding fruit. It's in you. Everything we need is in us. But the problem as human beings is like we like to hoard. The reason we don't replicate is because we like to hoard. The reason we are not fruitful is because we like to hoard. The little we have, we want to keep it. The, the little knowledge we have acquired, we want to keep it. And when you don't share this knowledge, what you hoard, it will eventually die. There will be no growth. What you hoard will eventually die. Sometimes we hoard out of pride because we want to be the only one that people run to for help. We hold what we have, what we've been given out of pride sometimes because we want people to keep running to us. We want people to keep, you, you, we don't want to lose our relevance. Forgetting that when you, when, you, when you hold back, you eventually lose your relevance because you become stale. What, so what you're trying to, 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 to protect, you eventually lose it when you hold back. We like to hold and keep it in so that we can be the one our families and relatives always keep running back to. But when we hold back, we are not fulfilling God's mandate of replicating. Because it is a command, it is a ma mandate. Be fruitful, multiply. It is a command, it's an instruction. So when you are holding back, you are not fulfilling God's mandate. Why do you think the 
Bible says in Luke chapter 6, it says, give and it shall be given. It's a cycle. As you give, as you refuse to hold back, it is given back to you. As you refuse to hold back, God replenishes you. Give and it shall be given. Good measure. Press down. Shake it together. Overflow. That's what it simply means. Overflow. As you give, as you give to people, as you give to the Lord, as you give your time, you give your resources, you give your talent, you give your skills, it's giving back to you. Good measure. You begin to have more understanding. The knowledge you share, you begin to have more understanding. You begin to have more understanding of that knowledge you share. Because the more you share it, the more your, your the eyes of your understanding become more enlightened, more enlightened, more enlightened. So when you hold, you stop the chain of flow. That is what happens. When you hold back, you stop the chain of flow. And God does not want you to stop the chain of flow. Because when you stop the chain of flow, lack comes. When you stop the chain of flow, stagnation comes. When you stop the chain of flow, retrogression comes. When you stop the chain of flow, death takes place. So he expects that cycle to carry on. To carry on. To carry on. The Bible says in the book of, can you quickly open your Bibles with me? Second Corinthians chapter 1. I want us to see the scriptures. I might be taking so many scriptures today, but please just stay with me because I'm teaching today. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3 to 4, it says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our tribulations, who comforts us, who comforts me and you in all our tribulations, that we may be able to comfort, that we may be able to comfort those who are in any trouble. The reason he's comforting us is so that we are able to also comfort those who are in any kind of trouble with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. The same measure of comfort we have received is the same measure of comfort we should give. That is what he expects. God is, God is a very astute businessman. Whatever God does, he does with an intent, with a plan, with a purpose. He does not do anything without thinking ahead. So he's, he's comforted you so that you can also comfort another with the same measure of comfort. That's what the Bible says that you have received. You've been blessed to be a blessing. You are not just blessed for yourself. You are not just blessed for selfish purpose. You've been blessed. Have you ever wondered why some people have been praying for blessings and blessings and blessings? Father, bless me. Father, bless me. And yet nothing is happening. Because the Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 17, it says, I, the Lord, I search the heart and I try the reins. I, the Lord, I search the heart. So when God sees that, look, if I bless you with this, you will not be a blessing. He hurts it and gives it to somebody else who he knows will be a blessing. Why do you think Joseph was the one chosen amongst all his brethren? Do you think because he was the, he was the, perfect, the, the most perfect in his family? Because God searched his heart. Why do you think David was the one chosen amongst his brethren, his brothers? Because God searched his heart. God knew their hearts. So you have been blessed to be a blessing. And when God says that when he blesses you, his blessing over you is going to be a waste. You're going to hold it back. He would not bless you. So you need to repent if you are like that. You've been blessed to be a blessing. You've been giving so you can give. Not to keep it back. Not to hold it back and become Lord and Master of all. You've been saved to save somebody else. You've been liberated so as to bring liberation to somebody else who is bound and oppressed. You've been taught to teach. What you know, the knowledge you've acquired, is not for yourself alone. You've been taught so you can be also a, a, a teacher to somebody else. Everything God does for us, everything God gives us, is for us to replicate in the lives of other people. You survived the fire. You survived the pain. You survived the loss. You survived the heartache. You survived the divorce. You survived the sickness, Just not just so you can be a testimony. Yes, to be a testimony is good. Hallelujah. We all want to be living, walking, breathing testimonies. But that is not just the reason you survived all those things. You survived. Not just to be a testimony, but to also be a source of encouragement to anyone else who is passing through that same fire. That is why you were not burned by that fire. That's why you were not drowned. That's why God delivered you from the shadow of death. So that you can also encourage somebody else who is going. There, is, there will always be people who will go through the same things that you have gone through. There will always be people who will face the same challenges, challenges that you faced and survived. And that's why you survived it in the first place. So you can be a blessing. For everything you've survived, God has given to you as a ministry. Yes. For everything you've 
survive every mess you overcome god intends it to become your message not just to keep it in and celebrate and have a party no having a party is good celebrating is good but that it, it does not just end like that it's for you to be a blessing to other people as well for you to be a source of encouragement to other people as well do you know how many deaths you would you you, you would deliver people from how many people who want to commit suicide thinking that they're, 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 they're in this alone that you would save them from if only you can just share your testimony beloved that is why you survived it you didn't survive it because you know how to pray more that's not why you survived because you're righteous because of your works no you survived it to be a blessing some of you were molested raped abused on all forms yet you survived some of you got delivered from stage four stage three cancer as the case may be some of you had just few weeks you were given few weeks and few months to leave you are still here today you survived you beat it you defied the, 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 the doctor's predictions and, 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 med and medical predictions over your life. You survived it. You are a survivor. But you're not just a survivor to keep the story in and have a story and like, oh, you, you survived to help somebody else. God helped you. God saved you so you can help somebody else. So you can save somebody else. So you can deliver somebody else. But you have refused to share your story. You've refused to share this great story because of the fear of being stigmatized or labeled. You've refused to share this story to give somebody else hope and courage. You've refused to share this story to bring healing to somebody's pain. You've refused. A lot of people are waiting for you. Do you know how many people's destinies are connected to your destiny? A lot of destinies are connected to your destinies and they are waiting for you to share your story. The story that will bring them out of their dark places. They are all waiting. So beloved, if you have not been replicating, if you've not been doing what God has ordered you to do by reason of him saving you, it's not too late. I believe that is why this word has come. It's not too late. Start sharing your testimonies. Start sharing your stories. Because a lot of lives will be saved by just your story. Apostle Paul said that we are the written epistle that they have seen. We are the written epistle. A lot of people do not have access to the Bible yet until they hear your story. Your story will be the first Bible they read. Don't hold it back. Tell the world your story. Tell them how the Lord saved you. Tell them how he rescued you. Tell them how he delivered you from the powers of death. Tell them that you were once unclean. You were not born, born again. Tell them that you were, once, you were once unclean. You were once filthy. And he still chose this filthy person. He still chose some clean person. Because so many people feel so unclean and they live in self guilt and condemnation but if you tell us you are once dirty as they are as they are if you tell us you are once filthy as they are and yet god came to cleanse you to wash you and make you what they have seen then they would have hope you'll be restoring hope to somebody and you'll be saving one life from going to hell one soul from going to hell don't be afraid of being stigmatized or, lab or labeled your story is your strength your story is your power. Your story is your honor. Your story is your dignity. Your story is your ministry. We all know the famous Joyce Meyer. She was abused by her father at a very tender age. But she did not keep that story to herself. Today she has helped so many women. Her story became her ministry. Her mess became her message. God expects us to replicate and that is why we survived those things in the first place. Don't make God feel like he made a mistake to make you survive in the first place. You survived to be a blessing. You were blessed to be a blessing. You've been given what you've been given to be a blessing. We want to win souls for the kingdom. We want to win souls. That is our mandate to go out there and win souls for the kingdom. We have all been called to be fishers of men, not just Peter. We've all been called to be fishers of men. We want to win souls. But how can we win these souls without the experiential goodness, love, and power of God? How can you win these souls without giving them an experiential goodness of God? Telling them that he saved me. He healed me. He restored me. He delivered me. How can you save these souls? They don't just want to hear what happened in the Bible alone. Because sometimes people think it's just a fallacy. 
a parable, a story. It happened in those days. I don't think it can happen now. But we want them to know that God's power is still alive and working even today. The Bible says in Hebrews 13 verse 8, Jesus Christ is saying yesterday, today and forever. He changeth not. The same God who did it in the days of the Bible is still the same God who can do it now. And he has done it for me. So if I don't tell them of my story, how will they know that God is in the act of saving and delivering and helping and healing and restoring? How will they know? God is waiting on you to go out and bear forth fruit. The Bible says in Romans chapter 2 and verse 4, it says the goodness of God leads to repentance. You don't make people turn away from their wicked ways by threatening them. The gospel is not the gospel of fear. We don't scare people to serve God. You don't threaten them and say, if you don't serve the Lord, you are going to hellfire. If you don't give your life to Christ, you will perish in hell. They would perish, they would, they, would, they, would, they would choose to perish in hell because they would wonder what sort of God is this. But when you show them how God loves, he's a loving father. He loved me. I have a story. And I'm coming from somewhere. I was a mess as well. There was a time in my life I was a mess. I've done mistakes. Mistakes that I regret. But thank God that he overlooked my mistakes. Thank God that he took me out of the miracle and he set me upon the rock. Thank God that he washed me clean. If he could wash me clean, then he can wash you clean. That goodness of God will turn their hearts back to repentance. And not the fear we try to, to, to instill in people. You cannot make people serve God out of fear. Hallelujah. Amen. I hope somebody's being blessed. Let's quickly see these two scriptures. Luke chapter 9 and verse 3. I'm going to marry these two scriptures together. Luke chapter 9 and verse 3. And Luke chapter 22 and verse 35. I'll read the first one. Luke 9, 3. He says, this is Jesus Christ when he was speaking to his disciples. He says, take nothing for your journey. He instructed them. He was sending them out, giving them the mandate, commissioning them to go out and preach the word. He now instructed them, take nothing for your journey. Don't take a, a, a walking stick, a traveler's bag, food, money, or even a change of clothes. He told them, go just the way you are. With just the Bible and just what you are wearing. Go just the way you are. Don't take anything extra. Don't take food. Don't take water. Don't take money. Don't take anything. Just go the way you are. And these people obeyed and they went the way. He, the way. Then, 13 chapters after, Luke twenty-two thirty-five, 35, he asked them, then Jesus asked them, when I sent you out to preach the good news and you did not have money, you did not have traveler's bag or an extra pair of sandals, did you lack anything? No, they replied. Did you lack And He asked them, I told you in Luke chapter 9, so many months ago, so many weeks ago, perhaps years, I told you to go out and preach the good news. And I told you, don't go with anything. And now you went, you returned. He asked them, did you lack anything during all those times you were out there in the world? They said, no. Why did Christ have to tell them to go out without anything? Beloved, we are called the witnesses of our, of our God. We are witnesses to his good works. How can he be a witness to what you have not experienced? He wanted them to have an experiential knowledge of his power and might. And that's why I pray this morning that God should, should, should make us an advertisement of his immense power. He wanted them to have an experiential knowledge of what he can do and who he is. He wanted them to understand that he is able to provide all their needs. He wanted them to understand that he is able to provide shelter for them, food for them, clothing for them. He wanted them to know him firsthand because you cannot be a witness to what you have not witnessed. You cannot be a witness to what you have not experienced. You cannot be a witness to what you have not observed. He wanted them to know him for themselves. That is why he said to them, go with nothing because I want to showcase myself. I want to let you know I am God, the God who is able to do exceeding, the God who is able to do abundantly. I want to exp I want to exhibit my power. I want to showcase my power through you. He told them go. For them to have that experience of him. Hallelujah. What was he doing? He was building their faith. He was teaching them how to rely and trust in him. He was teaching them that with faith there is nothing that you cannot achieve, you cannot do, you cannot be. And they believed in him. They trusted him. They relied on, on him for their everything. They relied on him for a place to sleep. They relied on him for food. They relied on him for change of clothes. They relied on him for shoes. They relied on him for everything. That was what he was trying to teach them. And because they came back with this 
experience of who God is. They were able to teach other people. They were able to tell him, do you know this God? He's able to supply all your needs if you can just trust in him. If you can just believe in him. And that is why God allowed us to go through all what we have gone through and to come out the other side a winner. To come out the other side a victor. So we are able to experience his greatness. We are able to experience his power. We are able to experience his might. So we are able to tell others, this God, he can do it for you because he did it for me. You need to have an experiential knowledge of who God is. For you to be able to be a good witness. You cannot witness to what you have not experienced. Hallelujah. So hear me family. Your experience is not for you. Your victory is not for you. It's for the world. We always quote this scripture in the book of Romans chapter 10 verse 17. That faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But prior to this scripture, to, to this verse. If you read from verse 14 down. Prior to this uh, verse. He says. How shall they believe in whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear unless someone tells them? We want souls to come to the kingdom of God. We want them to know that our God is great and mighty. But how can they come when we don't tell them what our God can do? And how best can we tell them what God can do if not through our stories? If not replicating what God has done in our lives? If not being a blessing, if not giving, somebody help you to get to where you are today in your career. Somebody help you to get to where you are today in life. Yet you are holding back from helping somebody else. Beloved, it's counted unto you as sin. You need to replicate what you've been given. You need to replicate what you've been given. We owe it to God as a debt to tell others of what He has done for us. We owe it to God as a debt. To tell others what we were told that brought us illumination, what we were told that brought us deliverance, what we were told that brought, brought us clarity, what we were told that brought us salvation. We owe it to God to tell others to replicate His good works in our life. The Bible says, Greater works shall we do than the one He did. We owe it to God and ourselves to replicate the works He did. To replicate the works. He did. Elisha is a very good example of replication. He replicated the works Elijah did. Hallelujah. Someone gave you an opportunity, like I said. So you can be able to give somebody else an opportunity. Someone helped you. So you can be able to help somebody else. The Bible says in Hosea chapter 4 verse 6, My people perish for lack of knowledge. Unfortunately, we think holding back makes us wiser. We think holding back makes us smarter. We think holding back makes people respect us more. That is lack of, of, of knowledge. For the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 9 verse 10, For God is the one who gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater. You know, sometimes you sit there and you think of the Bible. Sometimes I try to think of the Bible with human logic. Because I try to think he gives seed to the sower. He's not supposed to give seed, um, seed to the one who doesn't even have. He gives seed to the one who's already sowing, who's already planting. Then he gives bread to the eater. He's not supposed to give bread to the one who is hungry. But the more you use what God has given you as a blessing, the more he gives you. Because you're not holding back. He, because he makes you a channel. A channel. That's what a channel is. A channel never runs dry. The more you give what he's giving you. You bless people. The same opportunity that was given to you. Gives, you, you give somebody else that opportunity. What you know, you teach. The more he increases your wisdom. He expands your knowledge. He blesses you. But that's what people don't know. They think holding back makes them better. It is lack of wisdom to think that holding back would make you better. It is lack of, of, of wisdom. The more you, you, do, you, you do things that God has put in you, he increases your blessings, your knowledge, your skills, your anointing. But when you hold back for whichever reason, for whichever reason, whether because you are shy or because you are not so sure or because you are just selfish and proud, he takes it back from you. That is the truth about it. That which was given, that which you already have would be taken back. It's a simple truth. And I want you to go to, with me to the scripture so you see what I'm saying. Matthew chapter 25 is a lengthy one, but I want us to read it. We're not rushing home because we're home already anyway. <laughs> but I'm rounding up now. Matthew chapter 25 from verse 15 to 21. If you can please put it up there. Matthew 25, 15 to 21. Then I will skip to 24 to 26, then 28. This is a parable of the talents. And to one he gave, I don't want to, you know, um, I don't want to start from the beginning. It's quite a lengthy one. So I'll read from verse 15. So this is the master. And to one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to each according to his own ability. 
and immediately he and he immediately he went on a journey. Then he who had received the five talents went and traded with them and made another five talents. And likewise, he who had received two gained two more also. But he who had received one went and dug in the ground and hid his lot's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants came and settled accounts with them. So he who had received five talents came and brought five other talents. He replicated what was given him. Came and brought five other talents saying, Lord, you delivered to me five talents. Look, I have gained five more talents besides them. His Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a, over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Then he who had received, I skipped one of the two, you know, because of our time. Then he who had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. And I was afraid and went and hid your talent in the ground. Look, look there, look, there you have what is yours. But his Lord answered and said to him, you, you, you wicked and lazy servant, you knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered. Therefore, take the talent from him and give it to him who has ten talents. Now, the master was like, you knew that I'm wicked. You buried my talent. You are going to put it in the bank for you to yield increase. Like I said to you, God is an, is an astute businessman. Whatever God does, he expects fruitfulness. He does not expect stagnation. There is no stagnation or stagnancy in God's agenda for anything at all. What God has given you, he has given you a, 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 a family, a wife, a husband, he expects rep a, a, a replication, multiplication, a business. He does not expect the business to just be the same way. Yes, you might go through the processes, but he does not expect you to just stand there and be static and do nothing. He expects you to begin to work hard and begin to replicate what you've been giving. You've been giving the ministry a calling. He expects you. Everyone is given a measure of faith. But it's your responsibility to build your faith. Your, the, the measure of faith you've been given is not the same measure of faith you, sh you should have all the, all the days of your Christian life, all the days of your Christian journey. He expects you to develop your faith. The word you've received, he expects you to build on this word. What he has given you, even the anointing you received before he called you, he expects you. Today you might be able to heal um, someone who's sick with headache. But he doesn't expect you to stop at healing just headache. He expects you to be able to heal someone who has cancer, to heal someone who has, who has a typhoid, uh, any, 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 any sickness, terminal or whatever. He he does not expect your anointing to be this on the same level or the same measure. God expects increase. He's a God of increase. He was angry with this man, and guess what happened? He took the one talent from this man and gave to the one who had five already, who had ten, because he had already reproduced more. Who had ten? So when you hold back what God has given you, whether in blessing, or in, in any way you hold back, in career, whatever it is you hold back, you run the risk of it being taken away from you. And give it to somebody else. And that is what we don't know. We perish because we lack this knowledge. When you hold back, I keep repeating it. When you hold back, you don't share your story with the world. You don't tell people how God saved you. What do you do? That testimony, you run the risk of losing it. You run the risk of losing that home. God saved your marriage. You were almost divorced or perhaps you were divorced and you came back and you see somebody else going through it just because you don't want them to think or uh, to see you lesser than how they already see you. You refuse to share your story that could have saved that home. You run the risk of losing it. God blessed you uh, uh, any kind of blessing. You run the risk of losing it if you don't share. If you don't share. If you don't become a blessing. You run the risk of losing it. When you replicate you receive a reward. This guy who replicated his talent and had five more, the one that replicated two and had two more, what did the Lord say? He said, I will make you ruler over many. You have been faithful in the little, the little I have given you. You don't have much, but you are a blessing. I'm going to give you much. That is what God does. The little he has given you, he knows what he has given you. He knows the measure of what he has given you. You cannot begin to tell him, but God, it is small. He knows it is small. He knows the measure of what he's giving you. But with this small one, you can be a blessing in your small way then you see god expanding you you see god increasing you then you begin to experience overflow then your cup begins to run over hallelujah you've been forgiven you should learn how to also give forgiveness 
Forgiveness is a gift. We always go to God every day and we plead for mercy, we confess our sins. Yes, we still go back to sin. We still do those things that we say we will not do anymore. And he's always still forgiving us. And you can't forgive somebody else. I'm sure we know the story. Or I can go on and on with these things. You know, th th there's this other parable of the unforgiving debtor. He owed his master. He actually owed his master 10,000 denarii. 10,000 talents. And the master forgave him. He begged. The master ordered him to be thrown in prison, actually. And he begged his master and said, Master, I am sorry. I don't have this money. If I had it, I would have settled my debts. I don't have it. And the master forgave him. And on his way, he found somebody else, his colleague, who was owing him 100 denarii, which cannot be, you can't, you can't even begin to equate them. 10,000 talents and 100, you can't even begin to equate them. It was so minute to what he owed um, um, uh, his master. And the colleague begged him in the same way he begged his master. The colleague begged him and said, I am so sorry, I don't have this money yet. Please, just give me some time. What did he do? He ordered that the colleague be thrown in prison. And when the master heard it, you can read the scripture later in the book of Matthew chapter 18. When the master heard it, he said, wow, I pardoned him. I forgave him, yet he withheld forgiveness from somebody else. He couldn't pardon somebody else. Do you know what? Throw him in prison. So when you don't replicate what you've been given, you run the risk of losing it. That is the simple truth. I don't know who this message is for. I don't know what God has given you. But there is something he's given you. There is always something in our hands. What he's given you, you are meant to use it to be a blessing to the world. So that you don't run the risk of losing it. A talent that is not used, a gift that is not used, you lose it. I guess I have experienced it. I was not using a, a, a gift that was given to me. I was so unsure. I was shy. I was afraid. Would I accept it? Would it be, would it be welcome? Am I saying the right thing? And I lost it. But thank God for his mercy. So even when you are not so sure, you didn't send yourself. God sent you. He will back you up. Just go with the flow and do what he has ordered you to do. So you don't lose what has been given to you. Amen, somebody. Amen. So family, as I round up. Replicate what you've been given so it's not taken from you. You've been blessed to be a blessing. You've been saved so you can save. You were healed so you can minister healing to somebody else. You were delivered. You know who is the great deliverer so you can introduce this great deliverer to someone else. You don't leave them to die in their sins. You don't leave them to die in their mess. You don't leave them to live in lack and abject penury just because you want to be the man at the top or the woman at the top replicate what you've been given and enjoy the reward because there's always a reward when you replicate praise the name of the lord hallelujah i just want you to bow your head wherever you are this morning i want you to bow your head and lift up your voice in prayers i want you to ask the lord for mercy where you have failed to replicate his goodness in your life because in one way or the other we have all failed to replicate this goodness where you have failed i want you to lift up your voice and say father mercy some of you received mercy, pardon and forgiveness, but you could not give it to somebody else. So where you have failed to replicate God's goodness, God's wisdom, God's knowledge, God's compassion in your life. Say, Lord, I come before you and I cry for mercy this morning. I come before you, Holy Spirit, and I cry for mercy this morning. Have mercy, my Father. Is somebody praying? Have mercy, O God. Have mercy, O God. Have mercy, O God. Where I have failed. To carry out your mandate, I cry for mercy. Why I have failed to carry out your wisdom, to spread your love, to bring healing, to tell my story that will bring healing and liberation to somebody else, have mercy. A lot of people have committed suicide and you could have as well helped one person by your story. People feel alone. This world is lonely. You may have, the population might be in billions or trillions, but it's a lonely place. People need love where you have held love back. Say, Lord, I am sorry. Lord, I am sorry, Lord, I am sorry, Lord, I am sorry, Lord, I am sorry. Somebody prayed for you, yet you cannot pray for somebody else. Lord, I am sorry. Have mercy, Abba Father, when the Lord wakes you up and throws somebody in your house for you to pray for, that is when you really want to sleep. Yes, somebody stayed awake to pray for you, that is why you are still alive today. Say, Lord, I am sorry, Lord, I am sorry, Lord, I am sorry. Have mercy, O King of glory, have mercy. 
The Lord has given you gifts and skills and talents and you're holding back from using it to serve him in the place of worship where you are. Say, Lord, I am sorry. I am sorry. I've held back. I am sorry. I am sorry, Lord. Pride has set in. You think you are just too good to do this. I cannot be sweeping the church anymore. I cannot be washing the church's toilet anymore. You think you, are, you cannot replicate what God has given you. Have mercy of our Father. Have mercy of our Father. Have mercy of our Father. In the name of Jesus. You received grace. You cannot be gracious. Father, forgive us. Father, forgive us. Father, forgive us. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I want you to lift up your voice this morning and ask for strength. The Bible says, by strength can no man, no man, no single man prevail. He says, without me, ye can do nothing. There is nothing you can do. You can be, you can achieve without God. Say, Lord, I receive strength this morning, oh Lord, to replicate. Release strength, oh God, the strength to replicate, to produce what you've given me. Father, release that strength upon me this morning in the name of Jesus. The Bible says the righteous as bold as a lion. I receive the spirit of boldness. No more will I keep my stories locked in a box. The story that can bring healing and deliverance to people. No more will I keep that story locked in a box. I receive strength this morning, Lord, in the name of Jesus. I receive strength to replicate all you've given me this morning, oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Hey, I receive strength to multiply. I receive strength to be fruitful. I receive strength, Lord. I receive strength. Hey, ya kanda la ba kande se konta sa. Re kande le bo shoso ya kanda zile ya sa kanta sa ba ya kande. Without you, oh God, I can't do it. I receive strength this morning, mighty Father. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We bless you, faithful God. You know, sometimes the one reason people don't want to replicate is that they feel they are not appreciated. I don't know who this is for, but he just dropped in my spirit. You feel you're not being appreciated for what you are doing. Okay, the little I'm even doing, I'm, I'm trying to, to replicate, to use my skills and my talents and my stories and all that. And yet, I don't feel appreciated. The word of God says, be not deceived, for God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, that he will reap. Beloved, what you have sown, you will reap. You may not reap where you have sown. The Bible denotes that wheresoever a man sowed. He said, what? What you have sown, you will reap. You may not reap it where you have sown it. But you definitely reap what you have sown. So don't be afraid of sowing. Do not be weary in doing good. Because in due time, you will reap. You may not reap from where you sowed. But you definitely reap what you sowed. So don't hold back from replicating. Because the rewarder would come. And he will reward you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I give you praise, mighty God. Father, let this word take root in the lives of your people. Father, help us to replicate and reproduce that which you've put in us, O oh God. In the name of Jesus. Where we are afraid and unsure and, 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 and shy, we receive boldness, we receive clarity, we receive certainty. In the name of Jesus. We ask for forgiveness of sin from where we have held back, O oh God, in time past. We repent, no more will we hold back, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for this word. Let it take root once again, I pray. And let it bear fruit. In Jesus' beautiful, awesome, powerful name we pray. Come on, somebody shout a big hallelujah. Somebody shout a big hallelujah. Amen. Have you been blessed, somebody? Have you been blessed? I believe you have been blessed. I have been blessed. To God alone be the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. I want you to just um, lift up your offerings and your tithes, even as I pray over them. You have the church account details. Even as I pray over them, just lift it up, Father, Lord God, King of glory, as many who are putting their tithes and their offerings. Father, we ask, oh God, for the blessings that make it rich and added no sorrow to come upon them all, to come upon us all in the name of Jesus. We cover our seeds, our tithes and our offerings with the blood of Jesus. Give back unto us good measure rest down shaking together in the name of jesus let every devourer in our finances be rebuked and destroyed that which comes to pause as a devourer for that destroy in the name of jesus we pray for as many who do not have to give as you provide you are the god who provides please provide lord in the name of jesus we thank you for even as we come back next week we shall come back to with testimonies and increase and joy in the name of jesus we cover our seed to the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you all, everybody. I pray.
as soon as you enter into the week the grace and the peace of god will uphold you will keep you will preserve you in the name of jesus and like i always say please reach out to you know members of the church call people text people and see how everyone is doing we all need each other right now and also call the pastor check on the pastor okay see how i'm doing as well i need to feel loved by you guys amen amen so let's take our declaration this morning before we share the grace together in fellowship it's my year of overflow my season of abundance of great increase and bountiful harvest my cup overflows with the blessings of god giving no room for lack or want the overflowing grace of god is at work in me therefore what resources cannot get me favor surely gets me i function in god's overflowing wisdom knowledge power and might therefore all my adversaries are subdued before me i break forth on the right and on the left with ease excelling beyond expectations triumphing over challenges and overtaking with the speed of the holy ghost this is the year that it shall be said of me look what the lord has done in jesus name amen this is the year that it shall be said of you it shall be said of us look what the lord has done in jesus name amen shall we share the grace together in fellowship may the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god and the sweet fellowship of the holy spirit be with us now and forever amen surely god's goodness and mercies are following us all the days of our lives and we will dwell in the house of the lord forever and ever amen may the peace of god remain with you in jesus name amen hallelujah